Scenic Hotel Group, a place to stay no matter your staycation. From the legacy collection for those special occasions to Heartland Hotels with room for the whole Farno. Find your place to stay at scenichotelgroup.co.nz. The Black Caps are about to go back into test cricket mode. Two highly anticipated test matches against England, a day nighter in Mount Monganui starting Thursday week, February 16, then at the Basin from February 24, then two test matches against Sri Lanka in Christchurch and in Wellington. A 14-man squad's been named for the England test matches. Tim Southey's the captain, Michael Bracewell, Tom Blundell, Devin Conway, Matt Henry, Kyle Jamieson, Tom Latham, Daryl Mitchell, Henry Nichols, Ish Sodi, Blair Tickner, Neil Wagner, Kane Williamson and Will Young are in that squad. Let's bring in New Zealand Cricket's selection manager, Gavin Larson. Thanks for your time, Gav. How easy or not was this squad to select? Yeah, good afternoon, Piney. Um, oh, no, no squads are really what I call easy. Um, I think we've got a, you know any number of what I call incumbents um, across the, the Red Bull game. So, you know, there were probably a number of lock-ins. Um, I think the uh, Pakistan test, the two of them um, recently, they, they helped to inform a couple of the, um, the tougher decisions. Is one of those the, the front-line spinner? Ish sodi has been given the nod. Uh, 13 wickets in that two-test series against Pakistan. Is that, uh, as well as the wickets, the way he bowled in Pakistan, the main reason he is the front-line spinner? Uh, yeah, absolutely, Piney. Uh, you know, and I think it's fair to say that Ajaz uh, Patel sort of hit, hit that Pakistan series as our front-line specialist spinner. You know, Jazzy was just a little bit off his, off his game. You know, I didn't think he bowled badly, but um, I, I certainly thought that you know, Ish um, out, out, out bowled him across the two test matches. Um, Ish was, I thought, uh, I think exceptional. He hasn't played a lot of test match cricket, as we all know, for, for a few years. And, you know, he's changed his action a little bit and he, and he was running in harder and faster and, and very accurate too. And, and, of course, a leg spinner who's, who's got the wrong and can bring both, um, both edges into play, um, which makes you a very, very handy attacking option. So, you know, on balance, uh, we thought it was a, at the end of the day, a reasonably straightforward um, selection to have um, an extended squad of 14 that gives us options and having Ish in that squad. Great to see Kyle Jamieson back in the mix. Uh, hasn't played for New Zealand since the Test Series over in England last year where he suffered that back injury. How confident are you he'll be able to uh, to play a significant role, particularly with the ball? Oh, look, we certainly hope so. And, and you did right. How pleasing it is to see the big guy back. Um, it's been a tough period for him, <laughs> for us as selection, uh, selectors and of course you know, um, Black Caps fans um, I mean he burst onto the scene, we saw what he did over a couple of years and um, he's an exceptional talent, there's no doubt about that. So it was a tough time but he he, um, he bit his bottom lip, he, he rehabbed extremely well, he was patient and we, we, <laughs> we made sure that he was patient and look we're 100% sure that he's, he's ready to go. Is he ready for Two test matches on the bounce, um, probably not. Uh, but we're very, very confident that we'll, um, you know, we'll get a test match out of um, Kyle um, across these two England tests. Fantastic, Gavin. Can you just give us the landscape with Trent Bolt? What is the scenario, the situation around his selection for New Zealand at the moment? Uh, open door, um, Piney. So it's pretty much as simple as that. You know, we. We're continuing to have dialogue with, with Trent. Um, Gary Stead talks to him you know, on a reasonably regular basis. Um, Bolt is very, very positive about playing more cricket for New Zealand, and as we are. And there's a, you know, there's a certain tournament called the 50 Over World Cup at the at the back end of this year. And um, you know, I think we'd all love, and I know Trent would love, and fans would love to see see Bolty running in and you know taking the taking the new ball for us. What about Test cricket? Is it likely we've seen the last of him in a Test side for New Zealand? Uh, we're not going to say that. Uh, this was a bridge too far. Uh, this series here. Um, so we're going to we're going to just take it um, series by series. We'll keep the door open. We'll keep talking with Trent. Um, but I think on balance, it's probably going to be more likely around white ball. Uh, we're certainly certainly not closing the door in terms of Test match cricket. Great to get that confirmation. Um, you will have been pleased, I'm sure, to see Michael Bracewell's development, not just in, in white ball cricket, but in red ball cricket as well over the last 18 months. Uh, I've often said on this show, you know, 18 months ago, he wasn't in any New Zealand team. Now he's probably a guy you're picking all three. What have you made of his, his elevation from a, from a, you know, a, a really solid first-class cricketer for close to a decade to now a key part of the New Zealand side? 
Oh, look, I'm absolutely thrilled for him, Piney. He has worked exceptionally hard over over the years. Um, as you sort of alluded to, he's plied his trade in domestic cricket. And I think it's a fantastic story, uh, just a, a great story for all domestic cricketers that, you know, you, you can make it in your early 30s and, and still, pu- you know, push out a, a really good international career. You know, Michael's got the potential for another, you know, good five or six years in front of him. Um, who knows, maybe more. And look, he's, he's hit the ground running. He just gets better every time we watch him play. And as you've quite rightly said, you know, he's, he's all but a lock in across all three formats now. And, you know, his skill set is, is, is incredibly valuable for us. He, his off spinning is just getting better and better. And, of course, we've seen his destructive batting as well. Um, so he just balances up um, playing 11s for us very, very well. Gav, do you have any say over the 11 that is chosen for each test match? Or is that now Gary Stead and Tim Southey's call to make? Uh, that's that, that's captain and coach. Um, and, and saying that, Piney, I, I keep very closely connected with uh, with Steady. Um, you know, there's hardly a day that goes by without us communicating in, in some form. And, and that will also include, as we lead up in, into the Mount Monganui test, I'm going to be up north, um, so I will be around. And Gary will solicit some thinking from me. Um, but, look, I'm not inside the fishbowl in and around, um, you know, the training facilities, um, you know, the, the, the potential matchups they want to look at, um, the scouting that they're doing. Um, so it, quite rightly, you know, I believe I take a slight, you know, slightly backward step when it comes to the selection of that playing 11. And just a wider question regarding the uh, the team. Um, I'll look at that team and, and I guess, you know, the vast majority of them are, are, are over 30. Any concerns about a possible ageing nature of this side? Uh, no, no, not really. Uh, we've got some nice depth developing. Um, I think that one of the main things to remember, Piney, is that you know cricketers are playing longer these days, and they are playing into their you know mid mid thirties and playing very very good cricket um, through to that age. So you know you might look at you know a number of our players who are in their in their early thirties. You know we believe they've still got you know the potential for three to five to six years of of cricket left in them, depending on how you know, committed and, and motivated they are and how well they, you know, keep their bodies in shape. And, and in this professional era that we, you know, now work in, you know, the, the strength and conditioning seems to almost look after itself. So I don't have too many qualms there. Um, the, the issue is really around succession planning and, and the depth that's being developed around the country. Yes, there are some, some hot spots. There's, there's no doubt about that. But, look, there's never a, a succession plan that's full of green lights. Um, so there's... You know, there are some ambers and a couple of reds, and we've got to concentrate on those at domestic level and make sure we keep attempting to close those gaps off. Terrific. And just a, a final question on Tim Southey. He's obviously very new to uh, to test captaincy, uh, just a couple of test matches, obviously, but um, you feel like he'll uh, he'll approach his first home test matches at the helm with uh, with some relish? Oh, <laughs> absolutely. That's Tim. I was, I was speaking to him a couple of days ago. Um, just before this team was announced, um, he's he's really bubbly. He's full of life. He can't wait for the series to to, to get underway. And uh, I thought he did a really good job, and you know, pretty testing conditions um, in that last series. And um, you know, a little sort of like a duck to water in a way. He he leads from the front, and that's what you want from your captain. And um, you know, he's a he's a good good thinker of the game too. So yep, a good um, a good leader for us. Hey, thanks for joining us, Gav. We'll see you at the Basin in uh, just under three weeks. Perfect. Can't wait. Thanks, Pony.